next thing about this indian forest act 1927 is the degree of protection so reserved forest are the forest which are conserved very strictly nothing is allowed in the reserved forest then we have the protected forest and after that the village forests are the least protected areas so this act impacted the life of forest dependent communities the penalties and the procedures given in this act aimed to extend the state's control over forest as well as diminishing the status of people's rights to the forest use so there should be at least no kind of harm to the forest area by the human beings the village community communities were alienated from their age old symbiotic association with the forest further amendments were also made to restrain the local use of the forest mainly by the forest dependent communities so many amendments were done in this indian forest act of 1927 to allow the local communities to go to the forest or to do the things which is necessary for their livelihood so it was enacted to make forest laws more effective and to improve the previous forest laws so this is all about the indian forest act of 1927 so what type of questions they have been asked in this indian forest act year is important here the degree of protection this one question was already asked in the previous examination and maybe they can ask you how many are uh, the types of forest you can find out under the indian forest act so there are three types of the forest that you can find out under the indian forest act of 1927 so those type of questions can be asked to you under this indian forest act of 1927 then the current thing currently following a uh, kind of rules and regulations under the independent india as the national forest policy of the 1988 the forest policy mainly emphasizes protection conservation and development of the forest three things are there so from this section they can form any question as well and the development third number so then we have rao in the year of 2018 this was not enacted right now as well but one draft national forest policy of 2018 was pending in the uh, in the government of india you can say so according to this draft national forest policy the advocacy of 33% forest cover with the 60% forest cover in the mountains and hilly region was provided so under this particular rules and regulation of the draft national forest policy every state have to maintain 33% of their respective area in the state as a forest so the 33% area was once asked in the examination that's why i put a star there then joint forest management program the state forest department as well as local communities are involved in the conservation protection and management of the forest land under this particular law so here you can see the first number state forest department local communities both working on the protection and conservation of the forest here then two national bodies are also involved here the first body is called as national community forest management cfm national board of forestry the state board of forestry which is also called as state bf the state board of forestry and nbf national board of forestry both involved in this particular protection and conservation of forest under this particular policy the main thing is triple p model what is the meaning of triple p model triple p p model is the public private partnership model so ppp so public private partnership model means involvement of the public with the private organizations maybe private industries that is also allowed here or included here in this national forest policy of 1988 for the a forestation etc so i hope this is clear to you national forest policy of 1988 whatever included in this particular site then similarly we have another policy that is the national water policy like we have here we had here the national forest policy we also have here the national water policy of 2002 nwp was formulated to govern the planning and development of water resources and their optimum utilization the first nwp national water policy was adopted in september 1987 it was reviewed and updated in 2002 and later in the year of 2012 as well 
so enacted in the year 2002 very first time opted in the year 1987 and again updated in the year of 2012 so because here the 1987 uh, rules was so much changed in the year 2002 that's why here the national water policy written as 2002 and a small amendment was done in 2012 as well so the enacted year should be 1987 water resources available to the country should be brought within the category of utilizable resources to the maximum possible extent that is the first objective of this particular national water policy all the water present in the country should be used or utilized well non conventional methods for utilization of water such as through inter basin transfers artificial recharge of the ground water and desalination of the brackish or sea water as well as traditional water conservation practices like rain water harvesting including rooftop rain water harvesting needed to be practiced to further increase the utilizable water resources so here the main goal is you have to increase the water resources utilizable water resources where the water can be used for the human being purposes in the allocation of water first priority should be given for drinking water so first priority is given to the drinking water followed by the irrigation water hydro power project water ecology water agro industries water and the non agricultural industries navigation and other uses of the water in that order so very first priority given here to the drinking water so this is what national water policy of 1987 amendment in the year of 2002 and 2007 is 2002 and 2012 not 7 so that we have already discussed so i hope this is clear to you then we have similar another policy that is the environmental policy that is the national environment policy of 2006 so this is recognized that the maintenance of the healthy environment is not the responsibility of the government or state alone this is the responsibility of the humans also or the people living in the country also that is the responsibility of every citizen and thus a spirit of partnership is to be realized through the environment management of the country if you look at the objectives of this national environment policy of 2006 so here there are total seven objectives were there the conservation of critical environment resources that is the first objective then intra governmental the uh, intra generational equity livelihood security for the poor and the intergenerational equity so for the poor uh, poor people the intra generational equities it means in between a single generation any kind of sharing of the equity or the equitable profits you can see an inter generational equity means generation after generation it means there would be two different generations there and their between equalities would be there in the inter generational equity integration of environmental concerns in economic and social development that is the fourth objective so how you can integrate the different environmental problems their economic and social aspects efficiency in the environmental resources use you have to increase the efficiency of the environmental resources so that way lesser and lesser waste would be created more and more energy we can get from this small amount as well environmental governance that is the any establishment of statutory body rules regulations laws that all under this governance body environmental governance body under the national environment policy of 2006 then the last type of the objective here we have is the enhancement of resources for the environmental conservation so that is the seventh objective of the national environment policy so again i am saying that till date they haven't asked any question from these objectives but they can ask so there are only seven objectives if you can remember that would be best for you so i hope the national environment policy is clear to you the next thing that we have to discuss here is the biomedical waste management rules of 2016 and that was amended in the year of 2018 as well it replaces the biomedical waste management and handling rules of the 1998 and there was a major change so 1998 plan was totally dropped and new laws was created under the biomedical waste management rules the name is also changed this was the older name this was the new name so you have to remember the names older names as well as the new names this was one time asked in the examination also 
if you look at the act of the 1998 so in this 1998 act there was total 10 categories of the wastes and all these 10 categories wastes treatment all these 10 categories wastes uh, rules and regulations was provided in the uh, this biomedical waste management and handling rules of 1998 if you look at the definition what is the definition of the biomedical waste so the definition is provided here on the report also biomedical waste is defined as human and animal autonomical anatomical waste so that waste which is coming from the human body animal body during the treatment of that animal surgery of that animal or anything so that is related to the medical field all those contaminated equipments as well as the body part will come under the biomedical waste treatment apparatus like needles syringes and other materials used in the healthcare facilities in the process of treatment and research those all are biomedical waste what is the objective of the biomedical waste management rules so objective here is the the objective of the rules is to properly manage the per day biomedical waste from healthcare facilities at cfs so you have to collect that all waste treat it properly across the country and what are the salient features here in the biomedical waste management the salient features of the biomedical waste management rule of 2016 is given here what is the main thing amendment that is we have seen in the 2016 rule from the 1998 so the main thing here the earlier we can see that the 10 categories of the wastes was there in the year of 1998 these all 10 categories wastes are now converted into or classified into only four categories instead of the 10 we improve the segregation of the waste at the source itself so now what government will do government just provide the four different color bags the waste is collecting bags you can say or the buckets you can say there all these four categories are already separated and the treatment can be done easily for all these four categories so that is how this 2016 rule of the biomedical waste is designed the second feature of this uh, 2016 rule is phase out the use of the chlorinated plastic bags gloves and the blood bags within the two years upcoming two years so in the year of 2016 they have targeted the year of 2018 and all the chlorinated bags gloves all are removed completely so there would be no chlorine release in the atmosphere by burning or incineration so in after this incineration process no chlorine is released in the environment so this was the second salient feature of the biomedical waste here